So what we're going to do then is we'll do this as a practice test. I won't do every question. Sometimes I'll say, are we okay on doing this? And everybody nods their heads. I'll skip that question. But let's start here. Now, your test is going to have a non-calculator section. It's going to be nine questions, multiple choice. Okay? What will they be? I bet you lots of log rule stuff in different bases where if you had your calculator, you could just type it in. But I'm going to force you to evaluate it using log rules. For example, stuff like, don't write this, or you can write this down. Uh, stuff like this, for example, evaluate the log base 2 of, uh, that's not going to work, Mr. Duick. Uh, evaluate the log base 2 of, you a different base. Let's try that again. Evaluate the log base 5 of 250 minus the log base 5 of 10. That would be a good non-calc question as a multiple choice question. Because with a calculator, you would go base change, base change, and just type it in. How would you do this by hand? What's subtracting two logs the same as? Yeah, this is really the log base 5 of 250 over 10. And what is 250 over 10? I'd expect you all to be able to divide by 10 without a calculator. And so you're saying, Alex, this ends up being the log base 5 of 25. Oh, what is the log base 5 of 25? Two. That'd be a great example. Although I'll probably also do some algebraic ones. In fact, you know what? I think it says here, complete questions 1 to 10 without a calculator. So let's try these. How would you solve number 1? Yes. What did I say? It's nine multiple choice questions. Okay. What's going to happen is I'll start out the test by saying, everybody put your calculators on the ground. You all will. I'll hand out part one, nine questions. I'll say you should budget about 20, 25 minutes. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to go back and double check your answers, so make sure you double check your answers before you give it to me. When you're done part one, you're just going to walk up here, hand it to me. I'll give you part two, and I'll say go pick up your calculator. When you're done part two, you'll come to me. I'll staple part one on the top so that they get there together. And that's how it'll work. Okay? How would you solve this? First question I ask is, where is the x? Is it an exponent? Then if it's in the log, I always use, if I know one, I know both. I write this as an exponent. What to the power of what equals what? x to the 1 half equals 10. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. We also had a, uh, something that would let us get rid of exponential. By the way, please don't write on these. 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 Piece of paper. Thank you. We had a, uh, if we had a fractional exponent, we had a little trick. What was the trick for a fractional exponent? Trevor. It's both sides. Don't forget both sides. Why is that so nice? Here I get x equals 10 squared. Trevor, what's the correct answer here? A, B, C, or D. Thank you. Okay. I did say I expect you to memorize certain exponents, and by now you kind of get an idea what I meant by memorize. You got to be able to recognize. It. Number two, I think this would be a little over. I, I, this is great on the non-calc, except I don't know if I'd have three. So this is a little bit tougher than you'll probably find, which is good practice. What number is that right there, Emily? No, it's not. What number is that right there? It's not a 9. What number is that right there? It's not an 81. Because this is non-calc, what are all of those actually, Emily? 3s, okay? If it was on the calculator section, well, maybe I could log, log all three sides. You know what? This is non-calc. That means we're going to do the old, write it as, uh, are the bases the same? Have one base equals one base. Then I can equate the exponents. So I'm going to write this 27 as a 3 cubed to the 3n minus 1 times. I'm going to write this 1 ninth, uh, 3 to the what? Negative 2. Yes, elevator. And I'm going to write this 81 as 3 to the 4th to the n plus 2. What am I going to do with these two exponents here? Okay, so I'll get 3 to the 4n plus 8. What am I going to do with these exponents right here? 
still the same. Yeah, also multiply them. I'm going to get 3 to the 9n minus 3. Here, there isn't a power to a power, so the times 3 to the negative 2 drops down like a domino. It's still, you look in a little puzzle. Is that okay so far or no? Because I can't write 27 as a 9. It's 9 times 3, but that's not an exponent. 9 to what power equals 27? Right? And and also, by habit, I almost always go to the smallest exponent by default anyways. But not yet. 9 doesn't write 27 as an exponent. Is that okay? Now, question for you. What's that right there? Times? What do I do with these exponents then? Yeah, this is why... I mean, I kind of like this. It's a nice little bit of simplifying here, Katie. I'm going to get this. 3 to the power of... It's going to be 9n minus 3 plus negative 2. It's going to be 3 to the power of 9n minus 5, I think, equals 3 to the 4n plus 8. Matthias, do I have one base equals one base? Are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. My equation is actually going to be, and I'm not saying the exponents cancel. I'm saying, look, 3 to something equals 3 to something. The something's got to be the same thing. My equation is going to be 9n minus 5 equals 4n plus 8. Now what? More specific than solve for n, because that's what we started doing right here, actually. More specific. How? Here. I would probably go minus 4n from both sides. And it's at the same time, because I like to do two steps at once because I'm lazy, I would plus 5 to both sides. I think, I think, I think. And I'll get this. 5n equals 13. It's a, what is n equal to? What's the correct a, b, c, or d? There is going to be some kind of a common base solve exponential equation on the non-calc section of your test. I just don't think it'll have three terms. So three. Oh, this is an if-then question. You know how I know? Because I see the word if. Now they've worded this backwards from the way I word it to you. I always said if this, then this, but this is the then. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. What's my base in the if? Emily. M, what's my base in the if? M, the base is M? Really? M, what's my base in the then? M, M? Yes, it is. So am I going to use base change? No. So my next second strategy is, yep. No, sorry, what? Here's what I said. You always want to change the then. So if you phrase this as if something, then what? Would you not say, if this, then what's that? Always focus on the then, not the if. I'm going to be mucking around with this thing. Okay? But I started out because I'm trying, I'm trying, Brett, to turn this into this. First thing I always check is, are my bases the same? Because if they weren't, if that's screaming out to me, hey, try changing the base of this into that. But they're both what, M? Base what? M. Okay. Now, Brett, I have one term. I'll try breaking it apart. If I had more than one log, I'd try combining it. So I have an n squared divided by m. How do I break that apart? What's dividing two things inside the same log the same as? This is going to be the log base m of n squared minus the log base m of m. M. Oh! This I like. What is the log base m of m? So this is going to be something minus 1. Any suggestions here? Yeah, why not? So that would give me 2 log base m of n. <gasps> oh, that's handy. Because what did they tell me in my if statement? that I can replace every log base m of n with a what? Apparently this here is a 6. So this is really 2 times 6 
minus 1. And I think that's fair game to expect you to do without a calculator. What's the correct answer here? I think it's B, although my 1 has been chopped off. I'm pretty sure it's B. Is that where the hole punch is or something like that? Okay. Number four. Now this is also sort of an if-then question, except all they've given me is an if. They haven't given me a then to work with. Instead, they've said, write an expression for what? Write an expression for what? It means get the A by itself. Okay. Hmm. Well, the A is here. Before I get the A by itself, you know what I should get by itself? The log A. So I'm going to move this one over. How? I'm going to have to minus it because in front of it is a plus sign. I'll get this. Negative log A equals log B minus 5 log C minus 1. I want to get the log A by itself. What's right there? Shannon? Shannon? Uh, you know what? Positive, negative, positive. Divide everything by negative 1. Is that okay so far, Brett? What are we trying to get by itself? I think I should try and write this as one term. Now, here's the problem. That's a log. That's a log. What's that? More specific. More specific. A number what? Okay, you ready? Scene one, act one, and take two. That's a log. That's a log. What's that? No, it's not. And I, that's why I wanted you to say that. I, sorry, it is, but I don't see that. You know what I see? Isn't that a one? Because I want logs and everything to combine things, don't I? I'm going to rewrite this. The log A is going to drop down. Negative log B plus, and I'm going to move the exponent up there because we said we want, if we're going to combine things, we don't want coefficients. We want them as exponents. And I'm going to say, yes, that's a 1. But you know what? I can write any number I want to as a log. What if it had been a 2? It's a log of 100, uh, seeing as we're base 10. If it had been a different base, I would have put a different number, whatever the base number there was. Okay. Now I can combine this. Log A equals, are these all three the same base? Yeah. Do I have any coefficients in front? Nope. And then when I combine this, I gave you an easy way to remember if it was complicated. I would said positives on top, negatives on the, this is going to be the log of, there's going to be a C to the fifth on top, there's going to be a 10 on the top, can I put it in front because that's where we're used to seeing it, and there's going to be a B on the bottom. Is that okay, Trev? Okay. You know what I have now? One log equals one log. Yep. Where? Here? Here? Where'd it go? Right there. Positives on the top, negatives on the bottom. I elevated it, buddy. I elevated it. Okay. Is that all right? By the way, uh, Alex, do I have one log equals one log? Then the log can't. Okay, we're taking the anti-log. Shut up, Mr. Do it, they cancel. My next step, I can say, look, if I have the log of something equals the log of something, the something has to equal the something. By the way, what did we say this question wanted us to get by itself? Ta-da! Now let me pause. Uh, correct answer is uh, uh, A. Uh, did I do anything new there? I tried to tell you how my brain would approach this. I said, well, if they want the A by itself, let's get the log A by itself. Move the 1 over. How? As a plus sign in front of it, minus it. Move the negative over. How? Divide everything by negative 1. 
Then I said, well, since I have a single log over here, I'd like a single log over here. Hey, I can write a 1 as a log. That's a handy trick, by the way. You can also write a 2 as a log or a 3 as a log. You can write any number as a log if you need to. Uh, combine my log. Oh, move the expo uh, coefficients back up to exponents and then negatives on top, positives on the bottom. There you go. That's a tricky question. Number five. Which of the following is equivalent to that? I glance at my answers. I think it's obvious they want me to combine the logs. You know how I know? How many logs do I have here? How many do I have in all my answers? Okay, are, are we learning, hopefully, on multiple choice to glance at the answers for hints? Because it really helps, especially in math. Okay, I'm going to use my log rules. Oh, what's dividing by 2 really the same as? Multiplying by? I, when I see that, I also automatically see this. Now, why is that nice? What can I do with that 1 half by thinking of that 2 as a 1 half like that? What can I do with that 1 half? Amanda. Because if I'm going to combine them, I need to make them exponents again. I can rewrite this as the log of a to the 1 half plus the log of b to the 1 half. What's my base here? What's my base here? That doesn't look like the word log very good. Enough. Let's try that again. There. Looks like a um, Base 10. Base 10. Do I have any coefficients anymore? Then I can combine these. What's adding two logs the same as? I don't see that yet. Oh, oh, well, Mr. Duick says, start using your exponent and your log rules until you do see the answer. What do you see in two of your answers here? Amanda, square root. Oh, 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 what's one half as an exponent the same as? Ooh. So you're saying this is root a root b? Now the real question then, the real question here, m, is what does that simplify to? Does root a root b simplify to root a times b, root a plus b? Uh, uh, can I say those are wrong? I'm pretty sure. Yes? Is root a times root b root a b? Now this is math 10. They're sneaking it in. How do you multiply square roots? If I gave you this, 3 root 6 times 5 root 10, how do you multiply square roots? And the answer is, it's numbers by numbers, roots by roots. And that's actually how I remember it. It's numbers by numbers, roots by roots. If there were no numbers there, it's roots by roots. 6 times 10 is 60. It is A times B. It is that. Because how do you write times something. Don't you just write them side by side? Root 6 times root 10 is root 60. Root A times root B is root AB. Yep. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. But the real question is, Okay, what about if, uh, with exponents? The fact that the only reason we can do that and multiply and go further is because the exponents are identical. If it's been a two-thirds and a one-half, we're stuck with a to the two-thirds times b to the one-half. We can't take it any further. You can't multiply cube roots by square roots or fifth roots by fourth roots. There's no easy way to do that. Number six says, which of the following does not have the same asymptote as that? Okay, here's an asymptote question. 
What does every, oh, first of all, is this an exponential graph or a log graph? Exponential, all of you, hopefully by now it's ingrained. What does every single exponential graph look like? All of you, what does every single, okay? Th th by the way, this is why I did that stupid thing every time. I figure if I get one person to do it, you guys remember. So what does every single exponential graph look like? Or the real question is, what does it have as its asymptote originally? The y-axis, sorry, the x-axis, Mr. Duick, which as an equation is what? So any exponential function asymptote is the x-axis. What's the equation? Whoever said greater than, that's a domain or a range. I want the equation of the x-axis. Okay, and seeing as there's this is one you hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I like this question. I'm going to ask you about asymptotes almost certainly. Its original asymptote, the equation of the x-axis, is a line zero high. And on a graph, what's another word for height? Y. That's the equation of the x-axis. That's your normal exponential graph. How has this graph been moved? Five down. Right? Okay. Which of the following does not have the same asymptote as that? What's the asymptote of this graph? Is it an exponential graph? How do you know? Where is the x sitting? So is it an exponential graph? How has it been moved? It's got the same asymptote, and they want the one that doesn't have the same asymptote. Is this an exponential graph? How do you know? Where is the x sitting? So is it an exponential graph? How has it been moved? One left, and will one left change this at all? It has the same asymptote. Okay. Now, these two here, you'll notice they switch the x and y around. These are inverses of each other. I'm not going to ask you one this tough. I don't mind talking about it right now. I would have given you two more exponential graphs to pick from instead of giving you. But anyways, what did you say this had been moved, Alex? Which one of these has also been moved five down? Which one has to have a different asymptote then? This has been moved five up. I don't like this part where they've, instead of having a y there and an x, they've given you an exponential graph in logarithmic form. Yeah, forget it. I'm not going to give you one that yucky. But I would say, I expect to be able to give you this and say, tell me the asymptote. You know what I'd have for my answers? x equals 5, x equals negative 5, y equals 5, y equals negative 5. Or, if I gave you something like this, x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1, x, y equals negative 5, y equals positive 5. That's a more realistic, hey, there's four multiple choice ones to pick from. Okay. Number 7. Find the x-intercept of that graph there. Look up. I'm not going to worry about x and y intercepts, although you should be able to find them. That's math 10. However, I will feel comfortable asking you a domain question, number eight. Ah, nothing. I got Brett back there. She's having trouble. You going to make it? Because she's actually doing this. Okay. Trev, log question or exponential equation? Okay. Domain, what? can't I take the log of? There are technically two things. Or, the one you guys always forget, zero, okay? And what we are saying, let's reverse that. What must I take the log of? What's inside the log? What's inside the log? What's inside the log has to be 
bigger than zero. Positive. Amanda, what? I think you were right. Oh, well, get, what, what, what do I do now? Plus the 10 over. Then, divide by 5. Okay. You, we initially found the domain by actually graphing these, by saying, hey, this is base 10, so it's going to be uh, 1, 10, 2, 100, and we found the inverse, and then we did our slides. But what there is a shorter way. If all you're interested in is the domain, you simply say, what's inside the log has to be bigger than 0. Done. I'll email this out as a PDF as well, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will. It's copyright, but this company's not going to publish these anymore after this year. That's fine. Number nine. Turn the page. Did I circle it correct? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, number nine, although they've done this as a multiple choice, I'll probably give you a question like this as a written. This is a log equation. You know how I know it's a log equation? Because there's an equal sign with logs. See it? This question isn't actually asking you to solve. It's saying, when you simplify, what equation will you end up with? OK. What do we say our strategy was when we're dealing with the logarithmic equation? What do we want to write this as? One thing equal, I'm going to say one thing equals one thing. Either one log equals one log, logs cancel, or one log equals one thing. I'm going to combine the left-hand side because the right-hand side is one thing. It's a three. Yes? Uh, I can't combine them yet, although subtracting does mean divide. That's a problem. Although, what can I do with that too? Are my bases the same? Yep. I can write this as the log base 2 of n plus 1 on the top, positives on top, negatives on the bottom, and the 3 drops down. Now, it's a, if I had log base 2 equals log base 2, then the logs would cancel. Do I have one log equals one log? Nope. Where is my n sitting? Inside a, if I know one or both. Right? That was our strategy. Basically, if it's an exponent, log both sides. If it's inside the log, either in the base or in here, if I know one, I know both. I'm going to write this as an exponent. What to the power of what equals what? What's the correct answer? Which of the following equations will result? Ah, you can see what they're trying to trick us with, right? They're wondering which kids cancel the logs because they would just keep a 3 there. That's wrong. That's wrong. And, ah, oh, they're saying some people will actually multiply the 2 instead of moving it as an exponent. They'll, like, foil it or something like that. That's wrong. A. Is that okay? Now, for the record, if you did have this, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, what would you do now to solve this? Mass. Okay. Cross multiply. Foil this out. Get a quadratic and probably a fairly ugly one. I'm not going to give you one this ugly, but I am going to absolutely expect you to be able to handle something with n's on top, n's on the bottom, or x's on top, x's on the bottom, and a number over here. You better not freeze up. Cross multiply. I've done my big song and dance about it. Right, 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 right. This would probably be a written. This, in fact, this will be a written question, though. I'll give you a log equation on the written. In fact, I'm going to give you two. Count them two log equations on the written section. One will probably end up with a quadratic. Cool. One won't. 
What else did you have to remember when you were solving log equations? Someone's date. Right? I had to check for extraneous roots. Okay. Number 10. Two students solved this using different methods. Their work is shown below. Whose solution is correct? I guess what I'm really doing is looking to see if anybody made a mistake. So let's follow Jen's first. Again, I'm not going to give you one like this. This is too much typing. I'm too lazy for a multiple choice question. But this is good practice. Where'd the fours come from? Sorry? Oh, I thought you were right. Where'd the fours come from? Okay, is that correct? Is 16 4 squared and is 64 4 cubed? What would you do with these exponents? Okay. Is that right? Why? In fact, they didn't go 2 times 3. What did they, where did that eight, they went 2 to the 3rd, didn't they? So that's a mistake. So Jens is wrong, which means it ain't both. And it ain't Jens. It's either Bob's or no one's. Now let's look at Bob's method. Bob didn't rewrite this as an exponent. What did he choose to use instead? Log both sides, yes? Now what can you do? Move that to the front. Now what can you do? Move it to the front. You can't cancel the log. Whoever's saying cancel the log. No, never have. Uh-uh, i got to give you zero if you start doing that. Okay. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Is this correct? It's a what? Brackets. Binomial. Should be, this should be in brackets because you can see on the next line all of a sudden instead of multiplying the log and expanding it, he, I don't know, he's got an extra. I don't know what the heck happened here. That's a mistake. You know what? Neither is right. Jan, is that okay? Okay. That gives you a few ideas of ways they can ask non-calc type questions. Okay. I'm definitely going to ask you to simplify some logs. I will, on your non-calc, give you a word problem or two, either exponential growth, uh, half-life, base E, compound interest, Richter scale, and instead of having you solve it, I may just say, which of the following four equations is the correct equation? In other words, can I test, have you memorized that A equals A0, C, the T over B? Can you use it? That's a nice way for me to test, can you even fill the stuff in before solving it? Um, definitely going to be an if-then question on the non-calc section. Um, that's about it. Then we get to the calc section. Okay. Don't freak out about 11. Number 12, I'm not going to say don't freak out about in that there is part of this that's useful. You know how I would solve this on the calculator section? Look at your answers. Do any of them work out evenly? If they're decimals, that's a hint that you're supposed to graph this. Y1, graph this, Y2, and find the point of intersection where they cross. I am not going to ask you that on the test, but did I teach you how to check your answers on the written section for exponential equations using that method? Well, then that's handy. But, no. 13 is good, though. Which of the following is equivalent to that? What don't you see in any one of your answers? Okay. So apparently there's some way to make the logs vanish. Suggestions. Let's try moving the exponent to the front. You know what I wonder? Vlad, I wonder if the log base A to 512 actually works out evenly. Evaluate that on your calculator, which is why this is on the calc section. 
and I didn't have you memorize 8 to what power equals 512, which is why it's on the calc section. Now, how do you evaluate log base 8 of 512? What do you type in? Anyone? Log 512, close bracket, divided by log 8, close bracket. What is the log base 8 of 512? Is it 3? What's that simplify to? And don't you dare say 7m. 12m. 2 often too often man we we do the tough stuff and we're so thrilled with being done the hard part our brain relaxes. You'd be amazed how often when I mark someone's test especially in physics the mistake is made on the last line. And it's a dumb one, right? Cuz they've got all the hard stuff. Ah, I'm home free. I like number 14. Let's see. Try number 14 on your own. Try number 14 on your own. I'll do it up here. You know you have it right in front of you, Joel. I know you're looking up and copying it, but it's right in front of you. Just be thinking. Is that right? Since this was on the calculator section, Brett, although I know 16 to the 1 quarter is the 4 through to 16, which is 2. I said forget it. I'm not going to. You know what? Is this on the calc section? Do I want to save time? Do I want to make sure I don't make a dumb mistake? As soon as I got to here, I just typed that into my calculator as is. 20 to the third times 10 divided by 16 to the power of. Oh, there's more than one number in the exponent. 1 over 4. I better make that a fraction. Uh, brackets. You looking befuddled, Brett, or is that okay? Oh, would you like to borrow a graphing calculator for the duration of this tutorial? Oh yes, you're batteries girl, aren't you? I'll give you my silver so you won't accidentally walk off with it. If you don't get batteries this weekend, bring your graphing calculator to the test and I'll be willing to swap, but I'll also make fun of you. I don't think it goes in that way, kiddo. There you go. Is that all right? Joel? Okay. Now, I would have no problem if these numbers, itsl, were smaller. This would be a great non-calc question, too, except I'm not expecting you to be able to do 20 to the third power in your head. But is it fair game for me to expect you to do 10 in your head? Yeah, multiplying by 10. Is it fair game for me to expect you to go 4 through the 16? I think so. Where'd the fourth root come from, Trevor? One quarter exponent is fourth root. Okay, number 15. Suggestions here. I'm not going to panic. Apparently they think I can handle this. Emily, what's your base here? Can you say it with authority? Like you know, What's your base here? What's your base here? It's not a 64. What's your base here? Four. What's your base here? 
Because 64 is what, really? First thing I think I would do is I would say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Because Vlad, you know what I can do now? Do I have one base equals one base? Yes. Are my bases the same? And you know what I can do with those exponents? Equate them. Now, how did I spot that? You want to be alert. I mean, if they give you a 4 and a 64, that should hopefully by now kind of be screaming out at you a little bit. Or if they give you a 5 and a 25, or a 3 and a 9, but not a 9 and a 27, uh, there should be some screaming out at you. Okay? Pardon me? Then you can't solve this the way we're going to. You'd have to go graph and calculator or something. But do you notice your answers aren't decimals? That's why I figured we'd probably do most of this by hand. Because now, what's the actual equation we're going to solve? This. The log base 2 of x minus the log base 2 of 5 equals 3. There's equating my exponents. Now this is a log equation. I want to write this as one thing equals one thing. Are my bases the same here? What's subtracting the same as? Oh, so this is the same as the log base 2 of x over 5. Joel, did the logs cancel? Really? I can just go like this? Really? Why not? Because to do that, what would I need over here? Ah. But where is my x sitting? Location-wise, is it an exponent? Where is it then? In some... Okay. We have two strategies. If it's an exponent, log both sides. If it's inside the log, if I know one, I know both. Right? So what to the what equals what? x over 5 equals 2 to the third. How would I get the x? By the way, 2 to the third is what? 8, not 6, right? 8. Um, how would I get the x by itself? What's the 5 doing right now? Dividing, so I want to move it over. You know what? I think x is going to be 5 times 8. I'm going to say that would be fair game as a nasty non-calc. I'm not saying it, but I'm, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I consider easy, what I consider tough, what I consider technically you don't need the technology for. What do I say? You do need the technology for. Turn the page. Okay. Brett, here's another if-then question. You know how I can tell? If, except once again, the author of this has phrased it different from the way I do. The if is the log base 9 of x equals 5. The then is the mess. I'm going to work with this boy. Something is screaming out to me right now, just hollering at me with all of its might right now. There's something just shouting to me. What am I going to try? Why base change? Base what? 3? Base what? 9. And are 3 and 9 nicely related, though? Ah, so good stuff's going to happen. I'm going to rewrite the then as base 9. It's going to look like this. Log base 9. Log base 9. X over 729. 3. That's the base change law, right? Your original base is in the bottom, your original log is on the top, and it's the new base and the new base. Ah, just thought of a dumb way to remember. Your original base goes to the base ment. Ah, I'll use that. No, never mind, I'm not teaching Math 12 next year. Okay. Thought of a great way the final time I'm teaching this. Wow! <sighs> Where was that for the last 10 years? The base goes to the basement. That's brilliant, Mr. Duick. Stupid. 
How tough was that to come up with 10 years ago? Now, is this calculator section or not? Yeah. Then, what's that? Can you type? I don't think it's three. What is the log base nine? What is it? By the way, I could try and do this all by hand if it was non-calc. I would. I guess I would. But are we on the calc? Let's turn our brain off and it's going to be log three over log nine. I think point five. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. What can I do with this? Separate it. You know why? Because I think that's going to give me a log base 9 of x, which I can replace with a... Okay, so if I separate this, I'm going to get this. The log base 9 of x minus y minus, dividing, but right, is a log base 9 of 729. And I know that I can replace that with a 5. Here's a 0.5. What's this? Is this non-calc? No? Well then, what's this? Evaluate it. What is it? Log base 9 of 729. I think 4? 3? Really? Oh yeah. Because 9 squared is 81. 81 times 10 is 810. 81 times 9 would be close to 800. Sure. Okay. Now again, you know what? I'll say, if these exponents were smaller... I would feel comfy with this as a nasty non-calc, but it's on the calc section. What's 5 take away 3? Divided by 0.5? What was that? I said for graphing, I'm going to ask you either an asymptote or a domain range. Okay. Number 10 to me is partly fair game. First of all, I glanced at the answers. What do all the answers have in common? Decimals. You know what? If I give you this, it'll kind of be on the written. What type of an equation is this? It's a log equation. You know how I know? Because there's x's inside the logs. What don't I like about this? Because there is something I don't like about this. What do I have over here? Logs and, you know, first thing I would do, I would rewrite this, get all my logs to the same side and all my other stuff to the other side. I'm going to plus this over there, and I'm going to minus this over there at the same time. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 log base 6 of x minus log base 6 of x plus 3 equals 1. Because doesn't that look a little bit nicer like what we often saw? What's my strategy now? Sorry, I think you're right, but I couldn't hear you. Did you say something about a 2? Yeah, uh-huh. Because I want to combine these, but I can't right now. So I would say, move that there. I'll have the log base 6 of x squared minus... The log base 6 of x plus 3 equals 1. Now what? In fact, you know what? I'm going to need more room. Now what? Sorry? Yeah. This is going to be the log base 6 of... It would be an x on top squared, sorry, an x plus 3 on the bottom... That equals 1. Joel, do the logs cancel? Mm -hmm. Which one? Think carefully before you answer. I'm sorry. Um, no. no, if they did cancel, what would I need over on the right-hand side? No. And I don't. Oh, but where is the X sitting, Joel? Uh, there. If I know one, I know both. Okay. What to the what equals... Oh, I think it's going to be... 6 to the 1 equals x squared over x plus 3. To me, this is... Yeah. 
Here? Okay, now, this is all great to me so far. I have a feeling, though, that the quadratic that we're going to get doesn't factor and requires the quadratic formula. That's overkill to me. On your test, though, I think this would be a great question if I made this so that it factored. And then you had to check for extraneous roots and either they both worked or one worked or none worked. Right? One date, two dates, or no dates. So the rest of this, I'm actually going to pause and say, what do you think QF stands for? Quadratic formula. I'm, you know what? I'm not testing that. Okay. But you would cross multiply, and you would get x squared equals 6x plus 18. I'm pretty sure if you bring it over, you have a negative 18. Numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to negatives. Yeah, nothing works. It's going to be yucky decimals. Okay. Where are we going? Good, 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 good. My gut right now is about another half hour-ish, and then I'll do specific questions. Okay. Is this helping? I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay, this is a nice way to do sort of the whole unit, similar to the review quiz that we did. Um, $500 investment appreciates at 50, appreciate means increases, at 15% per annum compounded quarterly. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a trigger phrase for me that tells me an awful lot. Find the value of the investment after eight years. You know what I'm going to do first? What kind of a question is this? Compound interest. How did we handle these? Sorry? Yeah, I'm going to write this out because now I feel better. What are they asking me to find here? Brett? What are they asking me to find here? More specific. What are they asking me to find here? You know what, then? This is going to be straight plug and chug. No law because A is already on ground level. Yeah, they're asking me to find final amount. That means... I should be able to figure out everything else. What's A0 here? Oh, okay, let's write that. We'll do a little defect, right? Uh, A0, 500, do I have all of you for physics? No, I don't have you. Explain to her what defect means another day. Defect stands for list your data, find a formula, insert the numbers, crunch the answer. It's a strategy for physics. What does DALP stand for, Emily? Draw a little picture. When in doubt, defect and dope. I stole that from a teacher at Mullet, so I should mention that. Um, hey, 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 hey. What's C? It's going to be 1 plus 0.15. No, it's not. Amanda? Over 4. Why over 4? Quarterly. Okay. So it's compound interest, what I said, and you guys kind of zoned out. Appreciates means increases, I said. How do you know How do you know it's going to be a 1 minus? Decreases by 15% would be whatever, okay? I can't do that for compound interest, though, because compound interest doesn't decrease. It always gets bigger. Banks don't like to loan you and money and lose money. Yeah. What do you mean by they? you got to be very careful here. The compound interest questions will always be 1 plus, okay? I can give you a population percentage question where it's 1 minus because the population can de decrease. Or I can give you a car value question where it's going to be 1 minus because cars go down in value, uh, sadly, dramatically. Is that a compound interest? Okay. Can I keep going? What's T? Eight. What's P? I think the final amount is going to equal 500 bracket 1 plus 0.15 over 4 to the power of 8 over 0.25 or 8 over 1 quarter. Or dividing by 1 quarter is the same as multiplying by what? 
you know what, 8 times 4, that's actually going to work out to a 32 if you really... Yep. I don't know, why did I? Compound interest. Okay, so I'll jog your memory. Are you ready? What's the interest rate for a whole year? What's the question say? What's the interest rate for a whole year? If it's 15% for a whole year and it's compounded quarterly, what's the interest rate for one quarter of a year? Divided by four. What if it had been compounded monthly? What if it had been compounded semi-annually? Divide by? What about weekly? Divide by 52. What about daily? Divide by 365. What? I think that's all of them. It's quarterly, semi-annually, monthly. Sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, but not very often. Okay, so it's divide to adjust the interest rate, and the period is also a fraction. It's going to be 500 bracket 1 plus 0.15 over 4, close bracket to the power of 32, 8 over 1 quarter. 1,624 dollars and one, uh, that much. How much was the interest? Well, if we started with 500 bucks and we ended up with that, the interest was $1,100 and 20, what, that minus 500 is the interest, right? Turn the page. Okay. So I said that we, we, did, we spent one day looking at logarithmic scales. There was Richter scale, pH, and decibels. Decibels I like because I think most of you listen to music and listen to sound. So nerdily, I like it, but I'm not going to ask it on the test. Decibels was a bit tricky because it was decibels. It was, uh, you have to divide by 10. pH to me is sort of fair game. I'm not going to ask it on your test, but pH and Richter scale were the same thing. It was always going to be 10 to the power of the bigger number minus the smaller number equals how many times more? <coughs> what is 10 take away 8? pH of 10, th of 8. Sorry? You know what? You with me, Em? You are now? Okay. And I think I've told you, it's going to be Richter scale on your test. 10 to the power of the bigger one minus the smaller one equals how many times stronger. And I think I told you, I'm almost certainly going to ask you to find one of those. Because that means logs! So I'll tell you how many times stronger the earthquake was. Is that okay? Here, 10 squared, 200. In fact, this, I would argue, could be on a non-calc section very easily. I'm going to assume all of you can go 10, take away 8, get a 2, and 10 squared. Yes? for the purposes of what the questions that I'll give you, because remember I went on a bit of a rant on some of the questions. I said I thought they were poorly worded. So I'm going to go with, you know, it's bigger minus smaller is how many times stronger. Is that what you're asking me? There you go. Yo. Because I'm stupid. The caffeine's wearing off. Think happy thoughts of faith and trust. You can fly. You can fly. You can fly. Okay, I'm good. There's no place like home. There's no place. But I'm stuck here. Shut up. Okay. Number 21 is a nice twist. It's an exponential growth. But instead, they're asking you to find... Don't write this down, actually. They're giving you everything but that. Whatever. Here's a base E question. You know how I can tell at a glance that it's a base E question? Okay, and I said to you, if it's a base E question, I'll either always give you the template or the whole equation. I think in this case they gave you the whole equation. They gave you K is negative point zero two eight. Oh, and they gave you, hey, what's that? When, what's that 6930? Six, six, Initial amount. Okay. Um, 
says, in what year will its value drop below 3,500? What are they asking you to find here? T. What's this then? Now what? Did you say minus? No, you didn't, because if you had, I would be freaking out right now. I would be lunging over the ca tablet computer at you right now with rage on my face. You didn't say minus, did you? Of course not. Uh, let's see. 3,500 divided by 6,930. I'll probably go 50505 because I don't want to round off because when you round off with exponents, your round off errors increase exponentially. And 50505 I can remember pretty easily. So I get 0. 0.50505 equals e to the negative 0. 0.0282t. How's that help? Now what? Uh, ln both sides, right? I even left a little space in front so I could fit that in because I'm running out of room. Uh, I'll get ln of 0. 0.50505 equals negative 0. 0.0282t <gasps> ln of e. And the reason that's so nice, itzel, is the ln of e is 1. So how would I get the t by itself? So I'm minus, I uh, you know, divide, you're right. T equals ln of 0. 0.50505 divided by negative 0. 0.0282. ln of that answer divided by negative 0. 0.0282. And I get 24.22. And I go, wait, what? The, oh, what year did this start in? So what am I going to have to do with that number? Okay, okay, fair enough. Plus 1998. During the year 2022, the value will drop below 3,500 bucks. I don't like that extra step because I'm too concerned some of them make a dumb mistake here. So I'll probably start at year zero or just ask how many years until. But that, otherwise, that's a nice base E exponential growth question. Is that okay? You guys are doing good? Not getting spinny on me? You sure? Okay. Number 23. What kind of a question? Well, this is, I think, an exponential growth. They've changed the letters a bit. First of all, what's my base? 2, where A is the final amount, A0 is the initial amount, T is the time, and, oh, instead of P, they're using D for the doubling period. Okay. It doubles every 7.5 years. I think that's D. How long? I think they're asking me to find T. What's the 5? I'll be back. You guys are here? I'm ready to leave here. Be with me. I'm tired too, but I'm sucking it up. What's the five? What's the final? Okay. I'm going to not bother doing this because I, I'm sure there's going to be one in the written. I would give this to you actually as a written question. And I would say it doubles. I wouldn't actually give you this. I would expect you to know that little for me. I would say it doubles every 7.5 years. If the starting amount was five dollars, and the how long until it gets to be worth a thousand dollars? So that's fair game, but I'm just not going to do it. It's going to be written. Oh, here's a Richter scale question. Okay. It says the Richter scale is used. Blah 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 blah. 
An earthquake of a magnitude of 5 is 50 times more intense than one of its aftershocks. Determine the magnitude of the aftershock. Is this the strongest earthquake or is this the weaker earthquake? Reading this sentence carefully. To the bigger minus smaller equals how many times stronger? That's the equation you're going to solve. How will you solve it? Log both sides. Are you got are you guys okay in solving this, or do you want me to do this? So let me ask it again, because it wasn't a yes or no question. Are you guys okay in solving this, or would you prefer me to do this? No. Okay, thank you. That's good. And number 25, I'll just get the equation for. This is an exponential growth question. Okay. Uh, you know what? Forget that. That's yucky. Written. What am I going to ask on your written? I've tried to give you some hints, like there's going to be an exponential growth word problem on your written. There's going to be a richer scale on your written. In fact, there's going to be a couple of exponential growth word problems. Probably one increasing, probably one decreasing. Oh, no, 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 no. I said to you, one half life for sure, and then one with a per population increasing or decreasing. Okay. It's going to be an if-then on your written. Okay. I think after that, it's going to be an exponential question like this with x's as exponents, except not this tough because this has got a quadratic. See how you're going to get an x squared when I multiply these together? And this actually is a 2 and a 2. So I'm not going to just look if I got a... Ah! So not like this. Something like this. Where you have to take the log of both sides. Uh, how many logs do I have? How many x's do I have? 2. Get them the same side. It would be wonderful if there's some kind of a grade 9 mathematical operation. Where, but, okay, it could be one of those. And then there's going to be two, count them, two log equations. Something like that. So let's do these last few here. This is an exponential equation. What's my base here? What's my base here? Can I write a 5 as a 2? That's why i got to use logs. Comparing that with the one that I scribbled out where a base is a 2 and the 32 is also a 2, I could have done this one without using logarithms here. We're going to use logarithms. Now, what makes this question a little bit tougher is there's a coefficient. Easier is no coefficient. So this will be about as tough as I'll throw at you. This is where I said no shortcuts because it's easy to make a sloppy mistake. And I have a feeling we're probably going to end up using two columns, so I'm going to write over here first and then move over here because I'm going to do this in about eight lines. What am I going to do first? What can't I do with this 5 and this 6? Can't make it a 30. And unfortunately, if you do that, I, I, I think I cap this. This is probably going to be worth, and I'll probably cap it at 1. Because that's just, ugh. What will I do then? Where's the x sitting? So th this question should be obvious. What will I do now then? Log both sides. Now, going on from there is the tricky part. But for starters, I'm going to say, okay, log of 2 to the 3n equals the log of 5 times 6 to the n plus 4. The most common mistake with these, Vlad, is people now move the exponent to the front on this side. Why is that technically wrong? In fact, not technically, completely, absolutely, positively wrong. If you move this exponent to the front, what are you actually saying? It applies to the 5. Does it apply to the 5? No, no. What are we going to have to do then? Break this up. How? What's happening between the 5 and the bracket? My next line, I'm just going to drop this guy down, not taking any shortcuts. Mm -hmm. 
Now what? Now move the exponents to the front. What am I going to have to make sure of with this exponent, by the way, Itzel? Brackets. Guarantee you some kids won't on Monday. And they'll do the error that we saw in the, in the one quote, right? Oh! Killed me. Shannon question? Or it's a question? Two log here n log six plus four. You could I, I am so worried about making dumb mistakes here. I don't do shortcuts on these ones. That's all. Go ahead, but you're just taking the gamble that you make a sloppy mistake, right? And you you had me last year in physics. Am I usually fond of doing stuff in my head and taking shortcuts? So, I think, am I not like in physics, don't I? Do it in your head. Tell, my, my hint for you is then is, hey, if Duick is going all ballistic about not taking shortcuts, probably has a lot of experience with kids making sloppy mistakes on this and has a good reason to. Ready? Uh, 3n log 2 equals log 5. And yes, now I would go n log 6 plus 4 log 6 by going like that. How many n's do I have to get the same side? Uh, easiest is going to be minus that over. 3n log 2 minus log 6 equals log 5 plus 4 log 6. Double check to make sure I didn't make a sloppy mistake. I forgot the N. My subconscious was bugging me, by the way. I, like I stopped and said that because something was bugging me. My brain works weird. Really? We hadn't noticed, Mr. Dude. How many N's do I have? How many would I prefer? It would be wonderful if there was some kind of a grade 9 mathematical operation that Okay, so I'm hoping me using those same phrases has given you a trigger so that when you ask the question, I got two ends, what do I do? Oh, it would be wonderful. I'm hoping that pops into your head. So I'm going to get this n bracket 3 log 2 minus log 6 equals log 5 plus 4 log 6. Last, oh, sorry, second last step. The last step is being able to calculate this. Updating your status. Okay, now what? Hey, all of you, dual included, you want to practice trying to type that into your calculator to see if you can get the right answer. I'm going to freeze the screen so you guys can't see me. Answer accurate to at least two decimal places. Let me double check my math to see what. Log 5 plus 4 log 6. This typed in right.
Don't do that. So, hey, folks, you need to figure out what you're typing wrong then because silliness would be to do all the hard stuff and not be able to use your calculator properly and lose marks for that. Found it? Okay, do it. I've typed this in three times and I've gotten three different answers. What do I do now? Move on to the next question. But you've finished the test. You come back to this question. You go y equals. You clear whatever you have there. You graph the left side, 2 to the power of bracket 3x as y1. You graph the right side, 5 times 6 to the power of bracket x plus 4 as y2. You hit graph. Uh-oh, small problem. What's my answer? You know what? I better change my x max to 40. Otherwise, the answer won't appear on my screen if x is 30. Okay, I'll do that. I'll go work on the next question while my calculator is thinking. Then, second function, calculate, intersection. First curve, second curve, guess. Am I right? 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 Seriously? I mean, this is going to be worth four marks out of 42-ish. That means that one question, basically 10% of your test. So what you're really saying is, I just got perfect on one-tenth of my test for sure. That is worth crowing your triumph a little bit. Okay. Sure, I'd rather have that. Okay. So I said there's going to be an expo exponent e equation like this. And... It's going to be a logarithmic equation, which is going to be 2. Oh, you know what? I'll even be more specific. There's going to be one log equation like this with logs in everything. And there's going to be one log equation where there isn't a log over here, and you have to say, how do I get the x by itself because the logs don't cancel? Oh, if I know one, I know both, which we've already done a few of in, in this test. What's my strategy when I'm solving a logarithmic equation? I want to write it as one thing equals one thing. Double check though quickly, Alex, are my bases all four? Oh, then I can combine these. The right side is already one thing, so I'll just drop it down. The left side, Alex, what's adding two logs the same as? So this is going to be the log base four of, Joel, be ready. The moment's coming, be ready. Joel, can I cancel out the logs here? Yes. Why? Because you're the same. Now, technically, I'm not canceling. I'm taking the analog. But shut up, Mr. Do it. Yeah, okay. For all intents and purposes, we're saying, yeah. I'm not going to do that because that just offends. It's technically wrong. The next line, though, is this. 6 minus x, 5 minus 2x equals 60. Now what? Well, it's not factor. Factor is when you're bringing foil. Front door bomber. You have Mr. Rocket, clearly. Uh, 30 minus 2x minus 5x plus 2x squared. Sorry, what? Thank you. Gather like terms. 
2x squared minus 17x plus 30 equals 60. What kind of an equation is this? How do I know? Make it equal to 0, I'll minus 60 from both sides. In fact, I'll get 2x squared minus 17x minus 30 equals 0. Ah! There you go. I knew I could get you. You're still not nowhere near my best. Haley Fiddler two years ago was pretty good. I had a student about five years ago named Kevin who was chronically sleeping because he was an ESL student and was always emailing his, and talking to his friends all night. So he like he fell asleep several times during tests, and I had to shake him to wake him up. He sat right where Joel is right now, and when I did my Tarzan yell, he would jump so badly twice out of the chair onto the floor. He hated the transformations alarm bell. He was not... Oh, I don't like alarm bell, Mr. Duick. Well, that's a shame. I don't like that you're staying up all night. Now, this factors. These are the yucky ones to factor because of that. How do you factor those? You may have learned the box method. You may have learned factoring by grouping. That's grouping, Joel, not groping. Um, you may... Do you guys know how to factor these? Okay. I'll give you a method because there's like five. Okay? goes like this, and you might want to jot this down and write down the quadratic somewhere. I think this factors. Pardon me? I don't know. What did I say at the beginning of this tutorial? Okay. Um, who knows how to factor? What do you do? Can you tell me? Okay. That's enough for me to know which method I'll show so that also I'm not giving people who already know how to do something a new method that they might say, oh, I'll try that, and then they get, you know, okay. <laughs> Shannon, here's what you do. You find two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to negative 17. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to negative 17? Well, let's see. What multiplies to 60, first of all? 10 and 6. I can't really get a 17 out of there. What else multiplies to 60? 1 and 3? Oh, 20 and, 20 and, Amanda, 20 and 3, and what is 20 take away 3? Can I get a 17 out of a 20 and 3? Okay, so it's almost the same as when you had nothing here where you asked what multiplies to that and adds to that. Something here, it's what multiplies to those and adds to this. What are the numbers? So here's what you do. You rewrite the 2x squared. You rewrite the minus 30, but you take this negative 17 and you break it up into a negative 20x plus a 3x. That's what you do. Okay. Is that still technically a negative 17x? Okay. Then what you do is you're going to do factoring by grouping. Not groping, Joel, grouping. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to factor a GCF only out of the first two terms. So temporarily, ignore those. GCF. 2 2x. Watch, Shannon. Watch, Shannon. Left behind is going to be an x minus what? Then, ignore these two. Factor a GCF out of those. Positive or negative? 
Yeah, you're, you, I just want you to say it. Which reminds me to put a plus sign there. That's what. Positive 3. Full, pull a 3 out of here. What do you get? Pull a 3 out of here. What do you get? You know how you've guessed right? Look at the two brackets. They are what? That's how you know you've guessed right. Okay? We're almost done. There is another GCF now. There is something that appears in this and this. The bracket. What bracket appears in this term and in this term? What bracket appears in this term and in this term? It's now a GCF. If I factor out an x minus 10, you know what I have left behind? That's called the grouping method. It's called grouping because you group them into twos, into pairs. And I always do the groping jokes, you know, whatever stupid thing I can do to help you guys remember. Okay. That's probably the second best method to do this. Best method, when I taught Math 10, I used to give my kids 100 of these. And partway through, their brain would hardwire a subconscious circuit. And suddenly, they would just start seeing the answer. That's the best way. But it, literally, I would actually give them 100 of them. It was painful, but all of a sudden... You'd say partway through, Mr. Duick, I'm just looking at these and I'm seeing the answer. Yeah, your brain was doing it subcon this whole process very quickly subconsciously. Our brain's a remarkable, remarkable instrument. You okay with that? What are the roots? Oh, that's only the phone call. Hello? Hello? Oh, please, hello? What's the answer? Put a 10 in there, what do you get? Reject. What about here? Well, what's a minus minus the same as? I'm gonna have six plus something, that's gotta be positive. What's a minus minus the same as? I'm gonna have five plus something, gotta be positive. I don't even care what the answer is. You know what? There is a date, but only one. This is overkill. That's two exponential growth problems in one. It's saying, how many years will it take until DVDs equals VCRs? They want you to do two exponential growth and let them equal each other. Eh, forget it. Are you guys okay on a half-life question? I can do this one if you want to because it's going to be on your test. Okay? You got to go? Okay, sorry, no printout for you, but I'll email it out too as an attachment. You okay? You okay? You okay? Gesundheit, Gesundheit, Gesundheit. Joel's going. You ready? It says it takes 15 years until 5% of the original amount of a radioactive substance remains. Determine the half-life. Well, as soon as I see half-life, I go A equals A0, C to the T over P. And I know C is a half. Because that's how half-life is defined. What do they want me to find here? The half-life. Yeah, the, the half-life. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Uh, which of these is the half-life? Okay. And this, Shannon, you got to memorize. The half-life is the growth period. The half-life is that. That means they told me everything else. Um, oh, what's this 15? What's this 5? Careful. I'll give you a hint. It's got to be a final or an initial amount because that's all that's left. Final amount as a decimal is 0 0.05. What percent did we start out with then? If you finish with 5%, what percent did you always start out with? What's another word for everything? What's a number, a percent that describes everything? 100%, right? Which as a decimal is what? One. You're starting out with 100%, you're ending up with 5%. Is that okay? Let's go. Here we go. Uh, 0 0.05 equals 1 bracket 0.5 to the 15 over P. 
Is that one going to make a difference? But if there was a different initial, I would divide. I would not go times. Where's the P sitting? Log both sides. Uh, why am I going 0 0.05? Mr. No, yeah, it is 0 0.05. Good gosh. 0 0.05 equals... Oh, why am I going black all of a sudden, Mr. Dude? 0 0.05 equals... And the exponent's going to come to the front, and you're all going to write a proper big two-level fraction so that you know what's on the top and what's on the bottom. And you know what? I'll even just this once do that. Because, Vlad, how do I solve this? Darn right. It's math 8. Yes, it's ugly math 8. Still math 8. You're going to get this times this equals this times this. Or physics 12 students, which is everyone but Amanda, I'm going to move stuff diagonally. That's going to move to there on top. This is going to move where? Down there. Do I care about the 1? No. P is going to be 15 log 0.5 divided by log 0 0.05. It's going to be 15 log 0.5 divided by the log of 0 0.05. The half-life is, uh, what does it say, how many decimal places? At least two. I'll go 3.47 years. Did I type that in right? 0 0.5 and 0 0.05? Yes, I did. Okay. You've seen 98% of the test. I reserve the right for one multiple choice mini curveball, right? Because, again, I'm getting used to university when you have to learn how to figure something out on your own. Okay? Let me right click. Are we, are we done? I can stay longer if you really want me to. Okay. I'm going to right click and hit save, and then I'll print up copies here.